Hey everybody, Ryan here at eTrailer. Today we're going to be taking a look at and showing you how to install the line of Buyers Products Automatic Reset Circuit Breakers. Using a circuit breaker in your electrical application is very important and that's because it's going to protect that accessory if a short or electrical issue were to occur. So whether you have it on a pump, a plow, a winch, whatever the case may be, it's never a bad idea to add a circuit breaker. So a circuit breaker is going to work uh, kind of similar to how your circuit breakers work at home. So if you think about it, I'm sure we've all been there where you have a bunch of different things running at the house at once and it overloads that circuit and trips the breaker. And that protects not only all those items that you were running, but it's also going to prevent a fire. If all that current were to continue to draw through there, overheat, a fire could potentially happen. And this is more or less going to work the same exact way. So how it works is current is going to run from your power supply through a contact inside of this breaker and out to the other side to your accessory. Well, that contact in there is designed to uh, more or less accept a certain amount of heat because electrical current generates heat and so once uh, that current draws enough heat or creates enough heat past the breaker's threshold it's going to trip the breaker that way the power will get shut off to your accessories and you don't have to worry about damaging anything this breaker is an automatic reset so what that means is how oh, i mentioned that heat goes through that contact and will cause it to trip if there is an issue. So once that contact in there cools down enough, it will complete the circuit again on its own and give your accessory power. Now just to kind of give you a comparison, there's also manual resets, which is this one here. So you can see they're very similar. However, if this breaker trips, it'll actually open that up and it will not automatically reset you'll have to come back here and reset it to complete the circuit and that has some advantages um, if there's a big issue you're not going to have to worry about this reset on its own and continuing to send power but on the other hand too um, if it's something simple you know you are going to have to come back here and reset it and deal with that so uh, kind of just your personal preference there on how you want to set yours up but Either way, whichever breaker you, you do decide to go with, it's gonna keep that electrical circuit protected. So there is a lot of different size circuit breakers uh, as far as the amperage rating goes, and there's a few different ways you can figure out which one uh, that you will need. A lot of times, whatever accessory you're trying to power up, uh, a lot of times there's a label or some information on it that will tell you how many amps it draws. and uh, what circuit breaker you would need. If that information isn't available, you could always reach out to the manufacturer and nine times out of 10, they're gonna have a recommendation for you uh, right off the bat. And if all else fails, you can also use uh, what's called an amp meter and turn those accessories on, whatever you're trying to power up and measure the amperage that it draws. And then you could go from there. You could pair it up correctly to what size breaker that would work best for it. So this is a type three breaker and it's designed to uh, work with accessories that use anywhere from 12 to 42 volts. So really gives you a wide range and will work with pretty much most common type accessories. So at the end of the day, adding a circuit breaker to your electrical system is never a bad idea and just a really good way to make sure everything stays protected. So before we actually install this, I figured we could just kind of take a quick look at it uh, right out of the box. First thing I noticed is it feels really solid, uh, well built. There's really not any give to it at all. So kind of just feels good in your hands, you know. The top portion here, this cap, it does have a rubber seal that runs all the way along each side of it. And that's what's going to help keep this waterproof and there's just a couple things that stick out to me as well that make it uh, 
pretty convenient. These rubber caps here will help keep uh, the studs protected, and more importantly, if you do happen to bump into it, uh, you're not gonna have to worry about, you know, shorting it out or anything like that. Each stud does give you a label of auxiliary, so you know to hook up your wire to that auxiliary side, and the other one will be labeled battery, so you know to hook up your power source to this stud. So they really make it straightforward and uh, easy to work with. Now I will say, once you start getting into some of the larger uh, amperage circuit breakers, so this is a 50 amp one, here, just to kind of give you a comparison, here we have a 200 amp one. You can see that the larger amperage uh, is just a little bit bigger. And really, the reason is, is the studs are going to be larger. And that's because whenever you use uh, things that draw more amperage, your wires are going to be thicker and larger. So you're going to want these larger studs to... Uh, put your ring terminals over. So just something I wanted to mention and kind of give a quick comparison. As far as getting these installed, they're really straightforward. More or less, you're just gonna have to secure it and then hook your uh, wires up to each terminal. So really not a whole lot to it. And today we're gonna be putting this on a boat to protect uh, all of our accessories, our pumps, lights, uh, things like that. With that being said though, these do have a ton of different uses, pretty much anything um, uh, electric you can use to protect, whether you have a, uh, some type of pump, maybe a plow, a winch, whatever the case may be, these are all going to get hooked up the same way. So to actually get this installed, first thing you wanna do is disconnect your power supply. So whether you uh, undo your batteries, or in our case, we have a disconnect switch, we got that in the off position, so we know none of our wires are hot. And then we're gonna find a spot to mount it. So in our case, uh, the wires that we're gonna be hooking up for our all of our accessories are right here. So this is the power supply wire, and this actually goes to uh, the switch panel. And so I'm just gonna mount it right there. Now what I've done is just kinda held it up and pre-drilled a couple of holes and that's because I'm using aluminum self-tapping screws because this uh, metal is aluminum. I would recommend uh, picking up some self-tappers to secure this. It does not come with them. And what I'm going to do is just put that in and secure it down. Now keep in mind how I mentioned that there's a battery post and auxiliary post. You want to make sure to orient this in the correct way. That way you're not trying to stretch your wires way out or anything like that. With that being said though, go ahead and get it lined up. I'm just going to kind of get both of these started. And take our gun here and run them down. So from there, what we need to do is we'll pull off our rubber caps there and remove the nuts. Careful when you're pulling these off. It seems like right when you get to the very end, they almost kind of come off when you least expect it. So you don't want to drop it and have to deal with trying to find it. Carefully pull it off. And then as I mentioned, you're gonna take the wire that comes from your power source or your battery Put that onto the battery post. Then the wire that comes from your accessory, put that over the other post. We'll just take our nuts, get them hand tight, and then we can come back and snug them down. So we have them snug, we'll just go ahead and pop these rubber caps back on. So once you have it hooked up, you can go ahead 
and reconnect your power supply. So we'll just turn our batteries on. And then it's not a bad idea just to test out your accessory to make sure that it is functioning properly. Go ahead and power up our switch panel. You can see the lights illuminate. We have battery voltage. And if I turn on some of my accessories, you can make sure that they're working. And that'll finish up our look at and our installation of the line of Buyers Products Automatic Reset Circuit Breakers.